I want to talk about the finite game versus the infinite game. I've been researching this subject matter for a little while now, and I think I'm finally qualified to speak about it on my own behalf. So let's first talk about a finite game. A finite game is like a game of chess. There's two players that you agree on. Each player makes moves that are agreed on. If you make a wrong move that the game doesn't allow, then you have to take the move back. And so you can only make certain moves that each piece moves, or each way that pieces move. And at the end, there's going to be a loser, and there is going to be a winner. Okay, so that's a finite game. Main example of that is that there is going to be a winner, and there is going to be a loser. Now, the next game we're going to talk about is the infinite game. Now, the best example that I have for the intimate game, let's just talk about Earth. So, if we all played to win against the Earth, then that means the Earth would have to lose. Unfortunately, this is kind of what we're doing as a species, as humanity, is we're trying to, like, beat the Earth. We're sucking the oil, we're polluting the environment, we're killing off species... And in turn, it's actually destroying us as well. It's weakening our, it's weakening humanity. And so this is a good example is using, you know, taking care of the earth as an infinite game. Now, if you look so far into this infinite game, yeah, the earth is going to go into the sun and it is going to, you know, destroy itself at one point or the universe will as far as we know. But until that happens, there's no reason why we need to help it along, and that's what we're doing. But what we could be doing is we could be helping it preserve. We could be taking care of the land in a way that, you know, helps the ozone layer, helps climate change, helps the animals, helps each other understand that, you know, throwing away garbage and having less of a carbon footprint. All these things can actually really make a dramatic impact on how healthy the earth is. And so this is an infinite game where everyone plays to make the game better. There's no winners. There's no losers. Players drop out and those players are replaced with new players. And those players take care of the old players because they're no longer able to play that game. The infinite game. So, when you are speaking with someone, or dealing with an organization, or anything that has to do with something that you want to uh, basically, you know, better others, then you realize that you're in the right game, because that's the infinite game. When you play to make others better, then you're not playing to make yourself better. You're playing to make them better. And in, in turn, it makes you better. So going back to our first example, if we all took care of the earth, would that not make us better? And I don't mean better as in like better or worse. Oh, I'm better than you. You're better than me. Better for the situation that the earth would actually be healthier and we would be better off to have a healthy earth instead of an unhealthy earth because we live on this planet. And if we take care of it, then it's going to be, you know, an optimal choice for us to do. Now, you might ask yourself, how do I play this infinite game when I'm surrounded by people that are playing the finite game? And that's a good question. So... Number one, and this is Gary V, and uh, I'd like to actually drop another name, Simon Sinek. He's the one that actually has got me into the idea behind the infinite game versus the finite game, and I've chosen the infinite game, and uh, the 
reasons are clear and they speak for themselves. I don't really need to explain that, even though that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I just want everyone to walk away with new lenses that might enhance themselves. This has nothing to do with personal gain. This has everything to do with if you walk away with new lenses and you understand something where you're going to go out and help others and help the earth and live for something beyond yourself by watching this channel, then my, my work is, is been done and I've done a good job. Now, if you disagree with me, then, you know, you have that, uh, you're entitled to disagree and, you know, there may be some merit to, you know, your disagreement. So I would love to hear those disagreements. I know that I'm no better and I know that no one is any better and we're all here to make the world a better place. And in order to do that, if we all play to make each other better, then we could probably achieve that goal. <clears throat> but it's intent and that's Gary V. Gary V is a uh, podcaster, very smart businessman. I love listening to him, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> he's just he's just an amazing person. But yeah, he he likes to talk about uh, one of the subjects is intent. So when you are speaking to someone, and they say something, you know, it doesn't matter what they say. You just listen very closely. You look at their face expressions. You look at what they've done with their life. You look at how they interact with others. You, you know, all these little pieces of data are going to tell you the intent of this individual. And that's going to give you the yes or no whether you should do uh, business with this person or not. And when I say business, I don't mean just like actual business where we're like, working together to make money or, or working together for a better cause. I don't mean like that. I mean, businesses says maybe this person just wants to be your friend, friend, you know, like that could be a type of business. <laughs> and so I'm not really just referring to actual business that brings you money. I'm referring to like, you know, like, oh, would this person be uh, good for the common cause of what I'm trying to agenda, I guess, is as a good way to put it. You know, if we were all part of the same agenda, then we'd probably, get, especially if we were part of the agenda of playing the infinite game with each other. Simon Sinek goes into this uh, thing about Apple versus Microsoft, if uh, I'm not mistaken. And basically, the people at Microsoft, they like to play the infinite game. So what they're doing is... They're playing to be number one and to get the bonus. And so, like, if you're number one, then you're going to get the bonus. But in order to be number one when you're, you know, working against your colleagues, and let me restate that, working against your colleagues, you might hold data. You might not uh, help others that are close to reaching that same goal. And... This really causes, you know, competition in the workplace, which is not, that's not what business is about. Business is not about competition. Business is about enhancement. It's about getting your colleagues and your outfit, meaning the whole business as a whole, to the best heights it can and using those heights to better everything around you. Not to just make money. Money comes and goes, but money is not going to bring you happiness. And let me tell you, I'm at this age in my life to where, and some would say that this is not that ambitious, but I'm going to say it because I'm not trying to say that this is better or worse or anything. I'm just saying that some would say that this is not that ambitious. I don't mind running my business the way that I run it. The way that I run my business is I have a select group of people that I work with. All are playing the infinite game. If I find out anybody that's playing the finite game, I slowly just break away from that individual or that company or whatever they're representing. 
and I move and I keep surrounding myself with people that are willing to play the infinite game. Now, it is far and few between, unfortunately, and I'm actually quite embarrassed to admit that, that not many people understand how to play the infinite game and they're so hard programmed into the finite game. It's it's mind-boggling. I mean, here's another good example. So if you think about all of our politicians, they all play the infinite game with each other. Look at how this the loop is so perpetual. If this guy does that, and that guy does that, then this one gains. And then later, this one gains. And then later, that one gains. And so, for example, like if you're allowed to make a law as a president that's going to lift certain restrictions off of a business that you just invested into their stocks, and then those stocks are able to rise because of those regulations that you've lifted as the president, and become much more, not, the word's not much more, basically earn more on uh, stocks per stock because you lifted those regulations and that's just corruption. But it also is a form of the infinite game. Now the problem is, is that infinite game that the politicians are playing, they're only playing it with each other. They're not playing it with society and they've taught society to play the finite game even in school i mean look it's all if you think about this teachers teachers get paid by the hour but when students come to school they don't pay teachers by the hour they pay for their book which is a set price they pay for their tuition which is a set price they pay for all these things, which are set prices. And so what type of inspiration do you think that teacher has when he fully knows that he's got, let's say, 30 kids in his class and they all paid $400 tuition, okay? And he is only getting paid by the hour when he could be making $400 times 30 students and that would be his. And not to mention all the other things that they buy, like the books or the materials that they need in order to, you know, do that class, that he could be getting a percentage or she could be getting a percentage from that. Those teachers would become phenomenal teachers. The reason why is because it would be taken out of the closed market and put into the open market where the teachers would actually get to be paid by, per student instead of by the hour. And this is a model that has not been talked about that I, as far, as far as I know, now I know there's trade school and right now it's booming. What, what we're talking about and what I'm talking about, it's basically just, uh, you know, self enhancement, uh, self discipline, you know, helping one another. It's, it's basically just, you know, life coaching. Life coaching is a huge business right now. And you know what? I'm ashamed that it's a huge business because there's no reason that we couldn't have taught these values at home, in school, and in society way before, and then we wouldn't have to do this and we could get along. And that brings us to another subject that I like to kind of cover here. And I'm not trying to cross subjects, but I'm going on a rant, so let's do it. The millennial problem. You know, like millennials, they're accused of being... They're accused of so many things, you know, above all, really what they're accused of being is self-entitled. Oh, I'm getting a text here. So back to my train of thought, they were, they're accused of being self-entitled. They're accused of being narcissistic. They're accused of being lazy and they're being accused of unleadable. Like we can't lead these people. Well, I don't think it has anything to do with the millennials. It has to do with the leadership of the country and the leadership of what's going on in this country. People don't know how to lead anymore. It's not the millennials. Yeah, the millennials will, were dealt a bad hand. If you were able to have social media and 
instant texting, and basically instant gratification with all these different devices from a young age, that's equivalent to basically opening up the liquor cabinet to anyone who's under the age limit and saying, hey, oh, you had a bad day? Well, go ahead and just go open up the liquor cabinet. But you know, just like Simon Sinek says, there's no age restriction on this. There's no age restriction on social media. There's no age restriction on YouTube, there's no age restriction on how many how many uh, how many video games these people are able to play. Actually, there's even no age restriction on what type of video games our children are playing. A lot of the games are just shoot 'em up, kill 'em, and a lot of our blockbuster movies shoot 'em up, kill 'em. A lot of like all this stuff is it's a finite game. There's a winner and a loser. There's very very little games out there right now that are perpetual games where we play to make everyone better and we keep the game going. That's the whole point. Even the people who are playing the infinite game still have tendencies to go back to the finite game because it's so ingrained in their system. So going back to what I was talking about, because I don't want to go too far off on this rant, but the millennial issue. It's not just the millennials. It's the leadership of this country. Anyways... I just thought I would talk about this and I'm going to probably post it. If you like what I'm talking about and you want to talk to me, go ahead and like and subscribe. Please leave a comment and we'll talk about it. Thank you for listening and I hope everyone has a great day, week, night, weekend, and so forth. Bye now.